welcome to Let's Talk Kentucky. We are here with the Let's Talk team. It's Susan Mills and it's Katie Cooley in for Kim Dixon. Lisa, hi, and we've got a special guest with us today, meteorologist Jordan Smith. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hey. Good yeah. to have you. My Good to oh be my. here. So Jordan is here because, of course, we start mm. every show with Talk of the Town, and the weather is clearly the talk yep. of the town. Yep. And it matters so much because today is election day. We knew that the rain, we knew the turnout was going to be, yeah. you know, not so great. We've been talking about it all week. But with this rain, that's making it even worse. And it's going to be a severe day. So we kind of wanted to get an election forecast for folks who want to get out there and vote. Tell us when's the good time to get on out mm -hmm. there. Well, now. After, after 12.30. <laughs> well, let's finish watching the show first. But okay, see you later. <laughs> if you can get it done before like 2, 2.30, I think like 2.30 really being the latest here in Lexington, that's definitely going to be your, your like your latest you're going to go because we get closer to that three to four time frame and you're tracking that line of severe storms into Kentucky. So, oh, so okay. yeah, talk cool. about the severe weather piece because that's going to matter even mm -hmm. beyond the election. It is. So really it's Interstate 64 and points south from there. So anywhere, you know, say from south, Lexington is on the northern fringe. So we could see a severe storm here, but the greatest chance is in parts of southern and southeastern Kentucky. And, you know, we're looking at off modes of severe weather. That includes isolated tornadoes, large hail, damage and winds, maybe some flash flooding issues. Oh, so all of those things are on the table today. Okay. Wow. So again, tell us the best times for people to get out there. I would do it before 2.30. Before 2.30. Right. Yeah, so okay. within the next two hours. All right, thanks so much, Jordan. We appreciate you. Of course, You can hang you. out with us for a while. Okay. So today is National Barbecue Day, but it's going to be a whole barbecue weekend, and nothing goes better with warm weather than some good old barbecue, right? Oh, so this it. weekend, you can head over to the Bluegrass Barbecue Festival. It's going to be in Lexington at the Moon Dance Theater, and here's some photo photography, some video from years past. Look at that. Folks just out there having a good time. There are going to be nine pit masters. There will be uh, sweets and treats out there. You can go for $10 on the, at the day of. You can go for the day or you can pay 15 for the whole weekend. It's going to be a really great time. Oh, it's mm -hmm. going to be a blast. It really is. It, and it always is. And the weather, what are we looking at, Jordan, for the well, weather for this it's, weekend? It's looking pretty good. we got some rain overnight Friday into Saturday. But yeah. as far as the daylight hours on Saturday and Sunday, I think we're in good shape. All right, then. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people would be turning out for this. I'm sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. For yeah. some good fun. I know. Yeah. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. good and, you know, it's and like the, yeah. it's the kickoff to the summer. You know what I mean? It's oh, like, yeah. That's how it feels. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, so they haven't been able to have this particular event all pandemic mm -hmm. because well, obviously, right? Like, mm -hmm. you don't want to be, like, trying to chew ribs and somebody sneezing on you, you know? So, like, <laughs> even after pandemic, we don't want that. Exactly. <laughs> True. You don't have to closet <laughs> eat the barbecue. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Out. Try to, you know, and we all know I was a rule follower and a mask wearer, so when I would go out to eat in crowds, like, I'd be lifting my mask, taking a bite, chewing, <laughs> lifting it up, and, you know? So, like, folks can really get out there and, and enjoy it. I'm, I'm definitely going to go. Like, mm -hmm. I am addicted to grilled food. Mm -hmm. Love it, love it, love it. I think it's going to be really amazing. Anybody else going to go out there? Yeah. Maybe? I would like to try to go. Yeah. For sure. It's so close, too. It's right True. down the street from where we live. True. So. Maybe we should we should go and people could watch our show. LTK outing. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh, you might see yeah. us there. Yeah. All right, everybody, we'll stay with us. Coming up after the break, our countdown combo is going to be spicy, and we're kicking it off with this. Should a student be allowed to wear a Ku Klux Klan costume to school? Let's talk about it. We buy any car. Um, why sell your car at WeBuyAnyCar.com? Because selling it yourself can be, well, you know. So how many bodies does this car hold? Well, it's a five-passenger car. Right. Passengers. Yeah. Maybe even six. Avoid strange encounters. Come to WeBuyAnyCar.com instead. It's easy. You get in, get out, and get paid at a fair price. Cha -ching. Get your free online valuation now at WeBuyAnyCar.com. You know what they say. Mornings and DQ breakfast go together like biscuits and gravy. Oh, that's right. Two fluffy, freshly baked buttermilk biscuits smothered in warm signature black pepper gravy that's filled with mouth-watering Purnell sausage in every tasty bite. Because you know what they say. A quality morning starts with a quality breakfast. <laughs> they do say all this stuff, right? Well, they will, once they get a taste of our hearty and delicious DQ biscuits and gravy. And it's only a DQ. 
Happy tastes good. Hi, this is Joseph with Rapid Fire Home Buyers. Do you have a house that's costing you too much time and money? Maybe a rental house, an inherited house you don't know what to do with, or the house you're living in that you just can't keep up with. We buy property in any condition and any price range all over the Southeast. Sell your house as is for cash with no repairs, no fees, and no commissions. If you're even thinking of selling your house, before you call a realtor, give us a call for a free cash offer. Call 859-695-3875. My name is Andrew Cooperette. I'm the Republican candidate for Kentucky State Treasurer. I'm a Christian, a family man, and a small business owner. You may remember me from one of my businesses, Brood, the coffee shop in Lexington that refuses to shut down to Bashir's overreaching mandates. One thing has become very clear over the last several years. Our state government has gotten way too big and way too powerful. As state treasurer, we're gonna follow the money to crush corruption and get government out of our lives. So in May, vote for me, Andrew Cooper Ryder, for Kentucky State Treasurer. Let's Talk Kentucky. I'm your host and moderator, Sherelle Roberts, back with the Let's Talk team. It's Susan Mills, Katie Cooley in for Kim Dixon, and Lisa High, and it is time for the Countdown Conversation. This is the part of the show where we talk about as many topics as we possibly can in six minutes. It's going to be a good one today. Ladies, are you ready? Oh, let's yes. yes. All right, let's start it out with this. A Pulaski County middle school boy wore a Ku Klux Klan costume to school as part of an assignment to dress up as a historical character. The boy chose Nathan Bedford Forrest, an enslaver and the first Grand Wizard of the Klan. He wore the costume for four class periods before being reprimanded, and now the teacher who approved the historic figure costume is suspended pending investigation. Woo, there are so many layers here on this one. Susan. Wow. Um, so a lot of our history is extremely ugly. Mm. <laughs> and I, I feel like it's still important to teach that history so we don't make those mistakes again. I feel like um, wearing that costume is, I think we could go buy a picture, <laughs> you know, show the picture, yeah. and that would be enough. Yeah, Man. I mean, where did that costume come from, <laughs> number one? Um, hmm. Exactly. Uh, but also, to me, the teacher gave permission. They at, the, the student asked the teacher for permission to do this. So the teacher gave permission, although she gave permission just for that classroom assignment. I don't believe she gave permission for the whole day. Right. So there's, mm -hmm. there's, you know, some real ugliness there. But yeah, probably shouldn't have given permission for this particular yeah. costume. He just decided he was going to rock it out from the school bus to the lunch yeah. room. Yes. And I, mm -hmm. Here's my thing. Now, uh, this kid was either going for attention or he really and truly wanted to make a statement about his support for the Klan. Either way, he got what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is gonna follow this kid around for many, many years. And honestly, I'm here for it. If you wanna do stuff that's offensive, if you wanna do stuff that's crazy, if you wanna do stuff that's provocative, just be prepared to live with the fallout. Mm -hmm. And I like to know where people stand. And if you are repping the Klan, I wanna know. Mm -hmm. I really want to be able to keep my eye on you. Katie? Mm -hmm. uh, Why? Well, it's inappropriate, I think, especially in today's climate. I think the parents should have had a role in it somehow. I would have not allowed my child mm -hmm. ever. There's other ways to uh, talk about a historical figure. It's just inappropriate. Well, the parents might have had a role in it is the problem. Yeah. Well, yeah. Exactly. Shoot, Lisa my kid will not be hanging out with that kid. Came from, it might have been a family heirloom. Okay, anyways, we don't know, <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, so religion at work. Employers are required to accommodate the religious needs of their employees under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. So they can do so as long as it's not causing an undue hardship to the employer. But the Supreme Court just heard a case of a Christian postal worker who couldn't get Sunday off because there weren't enough other employees to cover. So this case that the Supreme Court is hearing could lead the way for the courts overturning the undue hardship standard and making it easier for employees to get religious exemptions at work. I think it's a slippery slope. I mm -hmm. mean, I think I'm a very religious person. I am at church every Sunday, but I'm concerned that this could go any number of directions mm -hmm. really, really seriously. Mm -hmm. Katie, what do you think? Well, I, I mean, I think that there's a good chance of people pretending to have some <laughs> religious affiliations because they're like, I could get out of work. And then who's going to challenge that? Mm -hmm. True, I mean, right. no one's going to challenge that. So I think, um, yeah, I do think it's a slippery, slippery slope, and I feel like it's not fair to the other employees to have to pick up 
slack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Susan, um, what do you say? I, well, first and foremost, I believe that during the interview process, I think they should be upfront, let them know, li listen, I have a religion and th these are these are what I would like to have. These are my, my requirements. Mm -hmm. And as long as everyone is on the same page, there shouldn't be any problems moving forward from there. Yeah, exactly. I think, and I totally agree with that 100%. It should be open and upfront. Now, sometimes though, folks do, uh, change a religion uh, during their tenure at work and you know they may uh, become reborn or they might you know whatever the case might be so during those situations I feel like that that conversation needs to happen with your boss with the employers um, and that employee should be patient in allowing time for the employer to be able to help cover their shifts or to help together be able to cover those shifts so it doesn't impact the business negatively. Yeah, so we'll see what the courts say on this and we'll keep you all posted. Yeah. All right, next to IVF money, a total of 54% of U.S. employers have insurance that covers in vitro fertilization, which helps folks who are having fertility issues have kids, um, but not every insurance company does. So should more insurance companies be covering this? Uh, Susan, what did you say? Well, I think infertility rates are increasing. I myself struggled with infertility um, and took advantage of my insurance plan that I had at that time. And had I not, I may not be a mother today. Mm. So it's really important, I think, for, for those who are really wanting to start a family. I don't think we mm -hmm. should exclude anyone that that can't. Yeah. yeah. One of the points that was made uh, in the article that brought this up was they said some folks can afford it, some folks can't. So we've got haves and have-nots of who can have a baby. This could create a, a caste system of who's who's able to afford to have a kid in America. And I think that that's problematic. Lisa, yeah. what do you think? Oh, I, I definitely agree. I think um, a lot of the larger insurance companies and conglomerates can afford to pay for that, and that's a good thing. But the problem is, is that it's not necessarily affordable for the smaller insurance companies or the ones that typically small businesses would lean on to get their insurance coverage for their employees, and therefore they can't cover it because it's just it puts too much uh, stress on their business mm. to be able to pay yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah. And last topic: drama queens, folks who can't stop talking about themselves and are always into something. A psychologist says they're just misunderstood and they need a little extra love. I'm not feeling it. My block finger is strong. Don't come to me with the drama, Katie. I agree. Um, they always have a problem. You all have a nice dinner. Theirs was not as good. It was cold. I mean, they compl it's exhausting. We've all had a friend or a relative that is super dramatic, and yeah. it, it's, it's enough. It is enough. Tough. Oh. We don't have enough time to talk about drama queens. <laughs> we don't oh, have I enough time to. to talk about so I know. Say. No! Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, we'll stay with us coming up after the break. A big block party is coming up in Versailles. We'll tell you all about it. Next E.T., Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne spill the E.T. Are we the next Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan? Hilarious <laughs> reveals from the longtime co-stars. I got dumped on my birthday. <laughs> next E.T. <laughs> Tonight at 7 on ABC 36. I smoked and I have COPD. My children are really worried. My tip is send your kids a text. It may be the last time that you do. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. When you get Hughes and Coleman, it can make a big difference. Insurance offer, $300,000. Our result, $1 million. Call 800-800-4600. Hi, I'm Jeff Pecoro, sports director at ABC 36. ABC 36, on your side. I'm Rebecca, and you might know me from reality TV. And this was my stubborn body fat that I just couldn't get rid of. But then I went to Sonobello and they permanently removed my body fat in just one visit. It is so intensely gratifying for one visit to make this big of a change. It's amazing. Sonobello's board certified surgeons use micro laser technology to safely target and remove your diet resistant fat cells permanently on your stomach, hips and thighs, back, and so much more. It feels incredible to look down and it's flat. Thank you again, Sonobello, I'm so happy. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly. Call 1-888-501-7304 or go to sonobello.com. Everybody. 
Tonight on ABC. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Talk Kentucky. I am Sherelle Roberts here with the Let's Talk team. Lisa High in for Kim Dixon. We've got Katie Cooley and Susan Mills. And we're joined by Hannah Grubbs with the Versailles Merchant Alliance. Welcome, Hannah. Hi, Hello. Thank you for having we me. We are so, so glad to, to have here. you. Yeah. So you guys have a big event coming up. We'll talk about that in just a sec. But tell us, what is the Versailles Merchant Alliance? The Versailles Merchant Alliance, um, a lot of people call it just the VMA for short. We are kind of a marketing co-op for small businesses in Woodford County. Um, so we have around 60 members now. Um, we get together and we come up with different ways to advertise and promote like Shop Small and things like that in Woodford County. So. Mm -hmm. How important is that kind of idea of shopping small to Woodford County businesses? It's very important. Um, like I said, we have about 60 that are VMA members, but there is so many small businesses in Woodford County. And um, when you think Woodford County, you think small, or, you know, I have in the past. But when you really get to seeing what all is downtown and all throughout Versailles, there's so many businesses. I mean, really, there's not much that you need to leave Versailles for if you live there. And there's so much to come to Versailles for um, that's not, you know, in surrounding counties. So um, it's really important to us. Yeah. So tell us about your big event you have coming up. Um, so that is the Friday Night Block Party, and it is in conjunction with Art in the Park. Um, it is on Green Street in Versailles. So that is, we're going to have merchant vendors, um, food vendors, beverage vendors. We'll have live music by Whole Shot is the band. Um, and we have all kinds of kids activities, bounce houses, balloon animals, um, all kinds of free stuff. And then up at Art in the Park, they are Friday night and Saturday as well. Okay. Um, they are all handcrafted vendors. So they have woodworkers, artists, um, musicians, photographers, um, just I mean, like anything you could think of, crafters. It's, it's a really cool event. That yeah. is, that's wonderful. Now, let me ask you this, why are you so passionately involved? with the with VMA so um, I I own small businesses co-own small businesses in Woodford County mm -hmm. but both of my parents were small business owners in Woodford County I come from a long line of, of small business owners um, but even before all of that I used to go for my mom's salon um, to represent her salon as a member of the VMA to the meetings and be involved in stuff um, and I, lo I just loved it I yeah. loved the sense of community and the encouragement and the um, the whole idea behind, you know, support your neighbor, shop small, there's room for all of us at the top. And I think that is just so important. Yeah, absolutely. As, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, as a Versailles resident, um, we go to all the block parties. It, they're fun, they're local, but the VMA has been great for the community. It's It includes everybody in every type of business, so I think that's awesome. Well, it's a way not only to meet new people that may be coming in to for sales, but also like see your neighbor there. Yeah. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. hey, Bob, yeah. hey, you know, <laughs> how fun is that? It definitely gives a really good sense of community, you know, to get out and yeah. see people you know and, and things that are in for sales that you didn't know about and just enjoy a good evening, you know, downtown with your family and friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you say that folks really don't need to leave Versailles because you have all kinds of things there. How are you guys convincing people to stay, to shop local? What are some of the things that you do? Um, the VMA particularly, we have started doing a, we call it a VMA scavenger hunt. Oh. Um, so all of our VMA members get um, these little, they're just like little cutouts of, um, like this month is May, it's a flower. Um, and they hide them somewhere in their stores. So that's part of our, our Shop Small campaign. And anybody that um, goes in and they take a picture of it, they post it on Facebook with the VMA hashtag. Um, at the end of the month, we go through and we put all of those names into a drawing. And we select a winner and they get a $50 gift certificate to any VMA business of their choice. Um, that is so cute. That's that doesn't even have to be the one they got it out. It could be any of their choice. So, and it's just a good way to get mm -hmm. people excited to win something and get out and see all the stores and visit places that they wouldn't normally go to. Um, so, yeah. That How is do people thing. find out, like, which businesses are participating? Um, you can go to the Versailles Merchant Alliance Facebook. We have, I'm in the info, all of our businesses listed. 
Um, I mean, ask any of your any of your VMA friends. Any of your pretty much most of the businesses downtown are participants. Um, but the best way would be to go to the VMA Facebook and, and look at the list there. Very cool. And we'll ask folks to go to the VMA uh, Facebook if they want to find out about any of the other events. Hannah, thank you so much for being on the yeah, show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And good luck on your upcoming event. Thank you. All right, everybody, coming up after the break, have you been drinking diet soda to lose weight? Well, I've got some news for you. It may be a waste of your time. We'll talk about it in What's Trending. With an exciting new Toyota, you can go out and enjoy all your favorite summer activities. Sorry. Get 3.99 APR financing on a new Highlander, plus two years no-cost maintenance. Your summer starts here. Toyota, let's go places. There's nothing quite like the feel and smell of leather. For over 45 years, the last genuine leather company has been providing the best selections of leather belts, wallets, jackets, bags, and so much more. If you need a great gift idea, something repaired, or custom made, we have you covered. If you're a leather craftsman, we have the tools and supplies you need. Come and see what you can discover at The Last Genuine Leather Company. Watch me. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. An open floor of inspiration. This is my place. Five positions to start, leotard and tights. A story through movement, under music and lights. Straight and tall, they promised I'd stand. I'm a ballerina who twirls like the blades of a fan. Watch me. Innovative scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. At rallies, I'm in the driver's seat. Give me that $5 meal deal with a rally burger. Better yet, make it a mushroom Swiss burger with that mmm mushroom sauce with eight-piece white meat chicken bites, Rally's famous season fries, and a drink for just five bucks. Yeah, all of that. Can I get a mushroom? My $5 meal deal with a mushroom Swiss burger. Whatever you order, own it at Rally's. Get all that flavor delivered. With an exciting new Toyota, you can go out and enjoy all your favorite summer activities. Sorry. Get 3.99 APR financing on a new Tacoma, plus two years no-cost maintenance. Your summer starts here. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to Let's Talk Kentucky. I'm your host and moderator, Sherelle Roberts, along with the Let's Talk team. We've got Elisa High, Katie Cooley in for Kim Dixon, and Susan Mills, and it's time to talk about what in the world is trending. Well, today, this is trending everywhere. The World Health Organization says drinking diet soda, it's a waste of your time if you're looking for weight loss. People trying to shed pounds often cut calories by consuming diet drinks, artificially sweetened treats, and other products containing substitute sugars. But according to a new assessment from the World Health Organization, those artificial sweeteners don't appear to be effective for weight control and worse, they seem to increase long-term risk of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and even death. So in guidance released Monday, the World Health Organization said, just cut out the artificial sweeteners. Unless, they said, unless you have diabetes, then you need to stick with it because you shouldn't be eating sugar. But guys, I am so disheartened. I thought I was really doing <laughs> I thought I was really doing something by drinking my little Coke Zeros and my diet ALAs and yeah. Well, is this another case of like you know it's like okay we have to have sugar free we have to have fat free and then people say no 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 we need to eat fat in our diet it's like so <laughs> I know we're, we stay confused yes. don't we so many mixed messages with with everything across the board every food and I've heard it several times in my lifetime it always seems to circle around too but um, yeah diet Coke I mean. I drink Diet Coke, um, not as much as I used to, but it's because I love the taste of it. I do. I love the taste. Like I can't it goes drink the with regular your food. Yes, it just it works. McDonald's, you've got it dialed in perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Weight loss. I don't do it for weight loss purposes, but you know, I do. I have heard though that people that are overweight um, that have that have been drinking, let's say Mountain Dew. Um, and they decide to cut out the regular Mountain Dew, go to diet, that they have lost significant weight. So I think it depends on your lifestyle 
um, that you're living and once you incorporate it, you know, what changes you're making in your lifestyle. Yeah, so the World Health Organization says long term, mm -hmm. it doesn't do anything for weight loss. And so I think mm -hmm. long term is, is the issue because we're all pretty good at doing a crash diet, you mm -hmm. know, when we've got to get ready for an event or this and that. But they're like long term, I don't know. Katie, what do you say? I mean, I do love Diet Coke, but I'm not thinking it will help me lose weight. Mm. I just drink it to avoid gaining, I guess. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I've drank it for so long because a childhood friend told me her doctor said a Coke a day could add 10 pounds by the end of the year. Have no idea if this is true. This was like the late 90s. So she started drinking Diet Coke, and so I was like, I'll drink Diet Coke too. And I have been drinking it now for 20-something years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do like it, though. I mean, yeah, I'm guilty. I'll be like, okay, I'll have a cheeseburger, fries, yes, ice did. cream, and a tie. And a diet and a diet Coke. Coke. <laughs> I know. We all do it. <laughs> well, it depends on how much you're drinking. You know, there are some people, I think, that really have an addiction mm. to soda. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when it can become really problematic. Yeah. All right, everybody. So take that into advisement. <laughs> so it's time to end the show. And we like to end the show with, you know, a little information, a little entertainment, and uplifting some folks. And so today we are ending by highlighting an outstanding person who is making her family or community better. We call it the woman we're talking about. And today's woman we're talking about is Marsha Thornton Jones. She's an award-winning author who has traditionally published more than 135 books for children with sales totaling more than 43 million copies worldwide. Her books include, oh gosh, Woodford Brave, Rat Fink, Champ, and she's actually here local. She works at the Carnegie Center for Literacy and Learning, and she is a mentor for other up-and-coming authors. So, Marsha, thanks for being you. You truly are a woman worth talking about. She really is. Thank you, Marsha. Gosh, she's amazing. Yeah, Marcia, absolutely. Marsha, Marsha, So, Marcia. if you would yeah. like to nominate someone for our woman we're talking about, head over to our page, Let's Talk Kentucky, on the WTVQ.com page and nominate somebody. We would love to lift them up and tell everybody how great they are. All right, everybody, that's the show. Thanks for tuning in. You can keep up with us behind the scenes on Instagram at Let's Talk KY, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye.